So next up is Ken Bitbeckers Beckers from Hypersert. Ken is the core developer of the uh, Hypersert's foundation, a member of Raid Guild DAO, Public Nouns, and uh, other DAOs. As a Web3 product developer, Ken's focused on building tooling for and on top of impact funding networks. Hypersert is a new protocol for funding and rewarding positive impact. So we'll let Ken talk us through what Hypersearch is all about and why it's relevant to you. Ken, it's all yours. So I'm Ken Bitbeckers, as you can probably hear. I'm located in the Netherlands. I'm Dutch. I'm a developer, but today I'm going to talk mostly about the Hypersearch Foundation. The Hypersearch Foundation is an organization that actually spun out of Protocol Labs. We've been ra we've raised, I think, like a year and a half ago, or actually established a foundation. We're f focusing on closing the value loop between funders and impact creators. Uh, the reason why we're focusing on funding and closing the, the impact loop is that currently there are a bunch, there are a lot of projects and groups in the world that are very dependent on funding from either private or public orgs. I've saw, I've seen a humbling list of organizations in the chat. So feel free to reach out to me after this meeting. The challenge that we see and that we want to try to solve for is that when you look at funding there, there's the sending of the, like the donating of the funds from the funders towards the impact creators, but it doesn't really have a feedback loop or not often. So you might give a grant, but you're not really sure what you're going to get back for the grant or as a grant recipient, it might even be very challenging to get access to these grants because these grants are, for instance, controlled by centralized bodies, or it's a very select group, or it's actually a group on the other end of the world that has like a, a gazillion difficulties to get the funds to the other side of the world, or maybe even to trust that the people on the other end of the world will actually do with grant funds that they want to do. So what we do at the Hypersys Foundation is that we utilize blockchain technology and decentralized tech to build an ecosystem for these impact funding networks. Be because we rely heavily on blockchain, that means that most information that we use is public and transparent and everybody can inspect this. It also enables us to easily send funds from one place to another, which you can also, you can add checks and balances in the funds, in, in the grant giving. And the checks and balances can even be very transparent. So in the, in my ecosystem where I live, we have a lot of NGOs, a lot of public good organizations, but they're not all successful. Not all of them are doing what they're saying, but it's really difficult to validate or see what they're actually doing because nobody can see anybody else's bank account. But if you want to say, I'm working with public funds, you might want to have a public ledger of what's happening with those public funds. And this is what we, the, what blockchain technology enables. The. Challenges, and I alluded to them already. I'm going to talk about the challenges of impact funding, and then I'm going to describe how we are building the tech stack or building the ecosystem to solve for these problems. On the, on the one hand, I think, a lot, I think many people that are here in this meeting or in this session are part of this group, which are contributors that invest time and resources in impactful work. You build open source software, you empower local communities, you, you set up activities for the environment, like a beast cleaning, Maybe you do just do community events. Maybe you do a soup kitchen, or maybe you steward over a piece of land or anything else. These are all things that I think if you look at, let's say the, the classical economy, they might not be valued highly because they have very low financial gain, capital gain, but they do have a lot of like social capital, environmental capital, spiritual capital, or any other form of capital. So they do have value, but they do not necessarily get dollars or euros or wherever you are. Then on the other hand, we, on the other side, we have the impact funders. So we have the public organization like governance or municipalities. We have NGOs. I think that like where I'm from, Oxfam Nobody is very, Oxfam Nobody is well known. We have altruism. We have Bill Gates. We have all other different kinds of people that are willing to give away funds. Similar, even like in my context, the European Union, what I here in the environments that I deal with is that it's really difficult to determine who you're going to give the funds to. So usually what people try to do is optimize the impact of the funding that they're giving to be sure that people will do with the funds that they expect you to do. 
but it's really hard then to get access to funds without having the reputation of being reputable or trustworthy. By building the Heartbeat ecosystem, we're trying to build these three, two groups together. We want to close the value loop where people want to establish impact and people want to fund these positive kinds of impact. And we want to take away these barriers for them to send funds from one party to another. Because if you just, yeah, so because if you get funds away, everybody's happy, right? So you can do grant fundings and that's great. Uh, but this raises a bunch of questions, right? Who is building the code? Are they really getting paid? Are they really the developers? How can you claim that you are the developer? What is really the impact? Are you just saying that you're doing something? How were they selected? Right? Is it nepotism? It was there like a committee? Was there anything in between? Was it a public process? Was it a private process? And I'm not trying to frame like we have a judgment on this. What I'm trying to explain is that all of these questions, we can try to figure out how we can build systems that can solve some of these answers. If you want to choose for a public or a private, private process, either can be fine, but you should have the option, right? You shouldn't be submitted to some private, private process because that's the only way that you can get funds. So this is what we do with Hypercerts. Hypercerts, the ecosystem is basically a triangle of three major components. And I think actually most of these components are also in this room as uh, experts today. So we have Hypercerts, that's a protocol that I created or that we created thanks to funding from a lot of orgs that want to fund these public good infrastructures. Hypercerts are basically an on-chain registry of impact. We tokenize impact where people can say, this is what I did. This is who I am. This is what I think our impact is. And that's it. So a hypersearch, you can view it as a claim in, a, in and of itself. Then on the other side, we bring the evaluators that can attest to this. And then we have the marketplace and impulse marketing mechanics. And I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into these three um, parties. Like I already said, hypersearch are claims of who did what and when. So here you see a small selection of hypersearches that have been created. Most of them are open source software, for instance, BrightID facilitates proof of uniqueness, which enables things like UBI and grant giving, but because we at least want to know that you're unique, so you can double dip into your UBI ecosystem. There's Ethers, that's very important for the Ethereum ecosystem, same with Autoscan, and then there's the Solar Foundation, that actually trying to raise funds to build these solar power grids. And then the solar power grids, they can um, be more empathized and raise funds again for the local communities that they're established in. So if these hypothesis are unchained, it means that they're public. And this is like one set of these public, and this is like one of the public data sets. So this is the amount of hypothesis that has been created, I think, two or three months ago. We had 50, almost 55,000 of these certificates. There's a lot of numbers here, just focus on the 55,000 and then a diagram in the bottom right corner. So you see these blue peaks, these blue peaks were certain funding rounds that have been done in our ecosystem. And then suddenly you get this red wave. This red wave is because there was some sort of announcement that somebody created the idea that you could monetize having a hypercert at that moment. So you just see that like a lot of people start creating these hypercerts, right? And this is exactly the reason why we need evaluators in your ecosystem. Evaluators help us to discern which hypersearch are true or false, right? Because anybody can make the same claim, but we want to know which of these claimers is actually the true one. And then still, even if they are the true claimer, is what they are claiming actually happening. The evaluators can still be anybody, but some will be trusted more based on reputation or expertise. And I think this is simply how things work. But I think the power that we, the power of the system that we try to build is that anybody can be an evaluator. So you can bring your own piece of expertise or your own piece of knowledge. You can even say, hey, somebody claimed I planted 500 trees or somebody claimed they planted 500 trees, but I live there and there are no trees, right? So you're, not, you're, no, longer you're no longer close in to these, let's say Vera, that's the, the gold standard for some sort of credential system. So now because we have these claims, and we know which one are more truthy, we can loop in funders and then say, hey, we have this whole set of claims. We have all these things that people have been doing all over the world. These have been validated. These are mostly validated and these are contested. What well, would you find anything to fund? And that, that's then what we try to enable. Maybe this is very confusing, 
maybe I'm going all over the place, but I think this is one simple example. This is like my, my prime example on what are we really trying to build? So we built the infrastructure, right? So we create the claims, we, we support evaluators, we build the marketplace. This is voice deck and what they, with the help of grants, they established a marketplace for journalistic impact in India. Because in India, the, the, the main source of income for journalists or like the second source of income is actually Bollywood, like the, the based on the true story narrative. But it also means that a lot of things that are very impactful in a country of that size are not being funded. But by creating these hypersters with all these cards that you see, they create a report of the work that has been done, the impact that has been reported, and you actually get newspapers attached to them. So you, you can actually see that this happened. The, you see these bars that are like a Kickstarter fundraising flow, which is actually the marketplace. And when you would click into these cards, you can actually see the evaluation reports and all the evaluators that attest to this. All the tech that we build underneath is, uh, is simplified to this Kickstarter-like experience. And this is like the key of what we try to build. Um, I put it in there if I would have enough time. I don't think I have. This is like the complex edition of what I just tried to say. Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. Uh, I'm happy to dive into you, uh, into this with you. Uh, so if you want to build, uh, if you want to utilize hypersearch, build on hypersearch, or you just want to know more, I like my, I'm really enthusiastic about working with uh, communities and especially local communities, because I feel in this whole crypto world that we live, we build a lot of like shiny sky castles, uh, and I really want to bring it to communities that have like a direct impact. So feel free to reach out.